Right, so we've got a completion here. Um, so everything's been done, and as you can see there near the end, all the BLFS stuff was done. So we've got a report which we could look at, an SBU report and disk usage report. Um, so bin utils is one, two, three seconds at one thread. Um, it's interesting because during my testing, at one, two, two seconds. So it lines up. It's just taken a second longer for some reason. Which is not really significant at um, two minutes. Um, yep, so then it's gone to build the BLFS stuff. As I say, it installs um, probably what I would normally install, the probably recommended packages if I was doing a manual BLFS build, things like ICU, um, libuni string, uh, libid and libpsl, and so on. So it's a bit more of a complete build um, and it's unmounted all the virtual file sy systems um, it's tried to remove the tools for some reason I'm not sure why that is but it's ignored that anyway by the looks of it finished building 12.1 so to be able to boot your new system you need to do the following steps mount virtual file systems enter the truth using the command Found in the section, entering the true environment, that's fair enough. So, so we've got to set the password, this is the important bit, so we've got to set the password, we've got to change the FS tab, set up the bootloader, which obviously includes creating the kernel because we haven't done that. Um, and as it says, if you're an experienced LFS user, then some of these steps can be done differently. And you probably all know that. So yeah, when I was testing this, I did actually do it slightly differently, which wasn't really a very logical order. So I'm going to try and do it a bit more of a logical order now. Um, do my best to anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. So I've got a record of what, just a reminder of what needs to be done. Um, I'll paste that here. So to do um, let's put that in that file in case I lose this I'm going to get another connection into this machine so root at e7500 and I've now got to um, get to the let's put that back there. Get to the virtual kernel file systems. So what I need to do is to mount these file systems. Uh, all right, I made some directories there. They should, they should all exist, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and then enter the true environment. Now, if you know LFS well, you'll know that the true environment changes, or at least it used to. So let's start about here because I'm not sure exactly where the new command will be. That's stripping, which should have been done by the script, cleaning up. Okay, looks like, oh yes, we're not in the true environment. The method has changed, isn't it? So we'll have to use that. Um, initial truth. Yeah, version 10, the method for building Linux from scratch changed in a certain way. So... Um, 
let me just carry on and see if there is anything about it. I can't remember if there is or not now. Yeah, so maybe it's because the truit is the one you'd want to use anyway. Yes, it is. It's because there's enough been built. Uh, the previous truits used the um, stuff created in the tools directory, so this would be perfectly valid to use at this this point. Let's use all the new new tools. Okay, so that's all right. So let's go back to our little message. We've done that, we've done that, we need to set a password for the root user, so let's do that. Always specify the root if I can remember because then you know exactly which user you're setting the password for. If I just do password, I may have missed that I've not logged into root and I'll be setting somebody else's password. So I've done that, create, edit or create etc fs tab. So let's do vi etc fs tab. So there's the um, template that's been added by the script. So I want to change the edit me's. So this has got to be SDA 12. And it's an EXT4 system, file system. And defaults is OK. And then I also want to add in there slash dev slash sda2 for the boot partition to be mounted. And that's ext2. I don't want it mounted automatically, but I do want the other defaults. And finally, the swap partition is dev sda3. And that should be it. Save that, so that's that one done. Set up the bootloader. So we need to go to the book for this. Um, so it will be, well, I mean, we could go through these bits and just check things. Um, just quickly go through and make sure everything's been added correctly. I guess it wouldn't do any harm. So it's just stuff to tune the system depending on what you've got there. So the first thing I'm going to do is just check that the network configuration has been set up. So cat if config is zero. So that's correct, that's correct, that's right. Gateway is correct and broadcast and prefix is correct. So that's okay. So look at the etcresolve.conf. Yeah, that looks all good. Not sure about that, but um, yeah, I might take that out. Actually, I'm not sure what that would do. So that's okay. I'm not sure if that's something I've done or something that um, the script has done. And check the host name. That looks good. Check the host file. So, right, so that needs changing. So, again, whether that's a typo by me on the setup, it probably is. Um, oh, no, it isn't. Sorry, no, that is the... Correct address. Yeah, that looks like that is correct, actually. Um, so, LFS12 underscore one, mynet.org, LFS-12.1. Yep, that looks all good. 
So boot scripts, that should be in there. Let's just quickly check. We've got an init tab. Again, this should all be in there because the script would have automatically done this anyway. It's just a pre-formatted configuration file. There's never normally much to change in there. So yeah, that looks like that's there. Um, hardware clock, let's check that. Yep, that's okay. Console. So it's got Unicode 1 now. Keymap UK, Latin 0 16. I think I normally have 1 there. Um, so that's for a German keymap. Polish. Sorry, German key map, but yeah, but this is the font I'm looking at. Um, I'm sure I normally have that as one. I'll leave it. If the font comes up a bit weird, I can always change it, see if there's any noticeable difference. So that's fine. System locale. So this is in profile, isn't it? So they've changed this as well recently. This used to be just an assignment. That assignment there, basically. Um, so it looks like there's a bit of logic in here now. So, yep, yeah, that's correct. Input RC, well, that's a standard file. Um, I guess, again, I could check it. But there's nothing nothing to edit there. Usually, unless you particularly want to customise it, which I have done in the past. Shells, again, it's a pre-formatted um, configuration that's put in, that's there, that's good. So making the system bootable. So this is a bit, as I say, that um, I couldn't automate. For some reason, I was getting some error at the make old config part. Um, it, it, so although you provide a config file, like I always do manually, um, I always run old config on the, on the file, even if it's from the same version, in case there's anything that the... Um, kernel scripts need to update or check to validate that it's a, a, le a legitimate config file and it seemed to fail at that point so although I ran it manually there were no changes it seemed to come out with an error as if it was waiting for something or something wasn't quite right so I don't know what the script's doing slightly differently um, so that's why I'm going to build it manually so there's the fs tab file um, so we've already got that. We've already just edited the template that was already there, that was put there by the tool. So now I'm going to go into sources. Um, let's have a look at Linux, see if I've got anything left over there. No, I haven't. So I'm going to extract the kernel. Okay, and I'll change into the directory and do make MR proper. And as usual, what I'll do is I'll copy an existing config file. So this is going to be the one that I had kept by when testing. So it should be in the prep directory, which is now on the root. And it should just be called config. There it is. And rename it to .config, which is what the kernel uses. Now I'm going to do make old config. And as I say, this is the exact config file I used for the final kernel when I was testing. So there wasn't any changes before. There's no changes now. Um, I'm going to make menu config. I always do a little quick eyeball, make sure it looks okay to me. General setup, I can see my suffix that I've added in there so that that looks all right one thing with the kernel if you're building this there's lots of recommendations here some of which are important um, this is important you'll get errors I think if that's not there and that's important you won't be able to mount the root file system if that's not set correctly so you, this is the bit you definitely want set that's probably a convenience thing which um, 
probably helps you death or replaces you death. I'm not sure, but certainly this is extremely important. You, you definitely won't boot otherwise. These aren't so important. They're probably more important if you're um, looking to go on and do some graphical stuff like Xorg and so on. And there's some specific architecture related stuff there. So for 64 bit, you deal, deal with this. 32 bit and more than 4 gig of RAM, you need to do that. And if you've got an NVMe in your machine, then you need to do that. So some good, useful kernel settings in there. If, if you ignore everything else, don't ignore these. Um, settings very very useful to have in there and and some explanations which is really good so yeah I'm happy with that I'm gonna run make now let's see if I've got my make flags actually echo dollar make flags yes it's set so I can run make and it should use both cores and I think this took 12 minutes previously so there's a chance it's gonna take longer because we've got a newer GCC it's gonna be doing more I imagine so it could take a, a little bit longer.
just put this, it's got to change, isn't it? Yes, to LFS 12.1 as well. And finally, this has got to change to SDA 12. SDA 12, yep, yeah, because that's our new LFS 12.1 partition. So that's that. The last thing I'm going to do before I actually reboot is to install OpenSSH because that wasn't an option. Um, I think, from what I've read, I've not looked deeply into it, but I think with B uh, ALFS you can add in other BLFS packages, but I think there's some uh, tweaking, some hacking around to get that done. It's not an, an option by default. I think you have to build the option in to do that, That's from what I can see and what I can remember. So... Right, so open SSH. So let's go back here. Um, so that's only got open SSL. So let's copy from prep. Um, BLFS. Mini kit, there should be an open SSH there, yeah. Uh, was there any patches? No. No, that's it. So I'll just copy this into here and extract it. And create a user and a group for the SSH daemon. And configure it. I think there's... Is there any other extra options here? No, not for this one. Okay, so let's start the build. Okay, that's done, and now let's install it. And I want to change this, but I always change this to yes, because initially I haven't got a LFS user, and uh, sorry, an LFS user, an ordinary user, and I'm not going to set one up anyway, so I need to, a way of getting into the machine. And as the only account is the root account, I need to set this up. Obviously, if there was a issue with um, security, then I would set up a normal account immediately and utilize that. But in this situation, it's just more convenient not to not to bother. And finally, we need to install some uh, boot scripts. So I'm going to copy again from prep. Um, BLFS mini kit and the BLFS boot scripts. In fact, I think I will create a BLFS directory here and move the BLFS boot scripts in 
into there and the open SSH files into there as well. Right, and then I just install that and it hasn't worked because I need to go down one further subdirectory. There we go. Okay, so that in theory should be the build complete. Um, now one thing just before I boot, or should I do it while we're in there actually? Yeah, I'll do it in there because it'll just show a bit more of the system in use. It's just the tests, um, just to check the tests and the results that I got originally. And also so that you can see what results I got, so you can compare if, if that's important to you. So let's tidy up the open SSH directory. Uh, oh, what have I done here? I thought so. Yeah, I did something a bit weird there, but never mind. Um, let's get rid of that, that's better. Right, that's better. Okay, yeah, so that's it. So what I'm going to do now is shut down the machine, and the next time I'll be booting up on the machine itself in the next video, um, checking that it boots okay, um, and just generally checking the system, make sure it's everything's as it appears. And as I say, last thing I'll check is the test results. So I'm going to come out of the truth, unmount all the file systems that I've got mounted. Um, in fact, I'll log out of this completely and do it from here because it's still logged in. Change back to root, U mount minus RV. Everything from any root can use the recursive option. Okay. So let's do that with sudo. So that looks okay. We've unmounted all the virtual file systems, boot's been unmounted, and LFS have been mounted. So I type in mount, yeah, there's nothing untoward left. So I'll do a shutdown minus H now. And again, only root can do that. So let's become root to do that. And yep, we'll be back on the actual machine in the next video.